Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be building a bioactive setup for my Abronia graminea. So I have a breeding pair of Abronia graminea that I'm currently housing together in hopes that they will breed. Up until now, I've kept them in a screen enclosure, which is pretty standard for Abronia graminea, and I wanted to talk about the difference between a screen enclosure and a glass enclosure, because I did decide to make the change to go to a glass enclosure, and a lot of people tend to think glass enclosures are really terrible for Abronias, and it's a similar concept with chameleons, where a lot of people are just against keeping them in glass, even though it can be done. There are pros and cons to glass enclosures and screen enclosures, they both just have things that are good about them and things that are bad about them. So the reason I chose to go with a glass enclosure, and this is just me testing it out, I might hate it. You never know. I hope I don't hate it because I love the enclosure I built. I think it's so pretty, so I hope that I end up sticking with it. I chose to go with the glass enclosure because it is a lot easier to maintain humidity in a glass enclosure. Now, if you live somewhere where it's naturally really humid, this might not really matter to you. But for me, I live in a very dry climate and it sucks. And in a screen enclosure, it is very difficult to keep the humidity up. It's something that I've always struggled with, with the Abronias, and I have them on an automatic mister that mists them a few times a day, and I feel like every single time I walk by their cage, I'm misting it down. I have a fogger on it sometimes. I literally do everything in my power to keep the humidity up because it's really important with them and it's just really hard with the screen enclosure as you can imagine. The main drawback with a glass enclosure is there is a lot less ventilation and having proper ventilation and airflow is really important with both chameleons and abronias in this case. So a lot of people tend to think that glass enclosures just don't have sufficient airflow. For my bioactive setup, I am using a 18 by 18 by 36 Exoterra, and Exoterras actually have pretty good airflow. There is ventilation on the top because the entire top is screen, and then there's also airflow in the front of the enclosure. So Exoterras do provide a good amount of airflow. Still not as much as a screen enclosure, obviously, but there's still a decent amount. And another thing that I did, and I've seen a lot of other people do similar things to this to kind of increase that ventilation and airflow in the enclosure, is I bought a little fan. It's like a little computer cooling fan that I'm placing on top of the enclosure. And it's not a super powerful fan. I didn't want anything super strong. I just wanted something that would kind of blow a little bit of air in the enclosure and circulate the air more. And that's exactly what this accomplishes without drying the enclosure out too much or disturbing the lizards. It's just a very light fan and it's adjustable as far as speed goes. As far as keeping the Abronias indoors, I think this glass enclosure is going to work out really well. And I'm still going to keep their screen enclosure for when I keep them outside because I do still like to keep them outside in the natural sunlight when it's not... 100 degrees outside so you know maybe next month i can start keeping them outside a little bit more so anyways we're gonna get straight into building the bioactive enclosure so a good starting point is to remove the enclosure that came with the exoterra and then i'm gonna grab the spray foam and just start spraying the back panel and i'm going to say right now i heavily regret using white foam i should have used black foam but I had white foam on hand, so I decided to go with it. But if you're gonna do this, please use black foam. It is so much easier to cover up later down in the process when you start covering it. Use black foam. I'm an idiot. I have many regrets. So then once the foam has fully cured, I am going to start carving it down. So you just wanna carve any of the smoothness off of it so that all that's exposed is the rough edges because when you go to cover it, it'll just look a lot more natural and things will stick to it a lot better. I started off with the utility knife and then eventually I just got a regular knife and it was a lot easier. But for a while there, I was really just doing this and struggling. So then I start kind of deciding how I want to place the wood. And then once I found a good spot, I just started doing the spray foam around the wood to kind of foam it onto the background. I probably could have 
just placed that down, you know, in the first place, but I didn't. Anyways, I also went and sprayed any of the areas that I missed before or accidentally ripped off or just wherever I thought it was too thin. I just added a bit extra. So once the foam cured, I once again carved it down and then I went in with dry lock. So the dry lock makes this look more like a rocky texture as opposed to the more often used method which is the silicone and the eco earth which is what i usually do i've never used dry lock before though so i wanted to give it a shot so basically you just want to start covering it with a paintbrush and add a nice even layer and just try to cover the foam as much as possible which is really easy if you use black foam just want to say but anyways and then once you have your first layer down you just want to let it dry and then you're gonna add another layer, let it dry, and just keep repeating this until you have like three or four layers or just you feel like it's covered enough. And I think I did about four or five layers. And then what I also did, but I didn't film this part, is I mixed a little bit of black and red cement coloring to it when I was adding my last couple layers so that it would have more of a dark and rocky texture to it because the whole goal here is to kind of make it look like stone. Once I had all of my layers down, I mixed a bit more black coloring to it to make a nice dark shade and I went in and put the dark dry lock in any of the crevices and just tried to add more dimension to it and give it depth. And then I took some of the uncolored dry lock that was really light and used it to kind of highlight any of the areas that were higher up. Again, just giving it more of a 3D and realistic effect to it. And what's nice about the dry lock is if you get some on the glass, you can just scrape it right off with a razor blade. So I was not very neat during this process and luckily it was pretty forgiving and I was able to get most of it off. And then this was the finished product. I actually really ended up liking it, but I'm not gonna lie, the process was a lot more tedious, I felt like. Now we get to go into the substrate, which is the fun part. So we're adding in the drainage layer, and I just use a heck load of Hydra Balls. And then I put down a piece of landscaping fabric. This is just going to let water drain through the drainage layer without the substrate falling down with it. And then for the actual substrate, I used the Josh's Frogs bio bedding. Now, I like this, but I just did not have enough of it, unfortunately. So I used what I had, but then I had to go and make some of my own bioactive substrate. So I started out with some organic soil, and then I add in some play sand. Also added some reptibark and some sphagnum moss. And then my personal favorite ingredient, I added some rabbit poop because it's actually a really good natural fertilizer. Normally I would use earthworm castings, but I didn't have any on hand and I was like, I have rabbits. So yeah, you can actually use their poop as fertilizer and it's all natural, which is cool. And it actually works really well. So I just added a little to add more nutrients to the soil and mixed it all together. I thought I was done, but I forgot to add Eco Earth, so I added Eco Earth. So then, after I add my substrate in, I went ahead and started putting in the plants and the other pieces of wood that I was adding in. And this is my favorite part of bioactive enclosures, but also the most stressful because I'm so indecisive and I feel like I'm not really good at doing this. So I just tried my best and ended up actually really liking how it turned out. So. Hooray! You can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm adding some sphagnum moss for my abronias. And then I poured some water in the substrate to get it nice and moist, and I sprayed everything down really well. And then I add my cleanup crew, so I grab some dwarf white isopods and springtails from one of my other enclosures, and some powder oranges from one of my isopod colonies, and then I added those in there for the cleanup crew. And then I almost forgot to add leaf litter, so I went ahead and put some leaf litter in there for the cleanup crew.
All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an overview of the overall enclosure. So at the bottom, I have this little fern thing and these baby tears, and I have a decent amount of moss for them to go down into. Moss is really important with the bronias to have at the bottom because they like to sometimes bury themselves and kind of burrow into the moss. Uh, you need to keep it moist too so that they can cool down and it's also just a really humid area that they can kind of go down into and retreat to and i just find they often do enjoy going down into the moss i have this random stick here there's this plant which is really nice because it's pretty sturdy there's also this vine a piece of cork down here just another thing for them to climb on and hide under if they want to. And then there's also like a cork round right here that I just have leaning up against the background back there. And then I have the pothos that I put up the back on that side and that side. It's not looking too hot right now, so I'm a little worried about her. I think she might be in shock because, you know, I just tore it apart and put it in this enclosure. So it probably isn't thriving. And then back here, I have a bromeliad. Bromeliads are also really important for abronia enclosures because in the wild, they will often utilize the bromeliads to drink water out of because all these little areas will collect water. Oh, did you see him peeking out? Hello. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I'm kind of obsessed with the way it turned out. Also, like I said, I have this little fan up here. And then up here, I have my Reptifogger. And fun fact, you can attach a two liter to the Reptifogger and it's a bigger container than what comes with it. So life hack right there. I've said this before and I will say it again. I do not recommend Abronias for beginner reptile keepers. I would say they're intermediate. They're not that difficult necessarily, but they are just sensitive to different things like heat and humidity changes. You need to be pretty confident in keeping up with those and keeping track and knowing what to do. And there's, again, different husbandry methods, like I mentioned, the screen versus the glass. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and check out my social media links. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram down below. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.